Legion Season 2, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 10, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything X-Men live action leading up to and including this episode. The episode is rated TVMA, so will this video be. Let's dive right in. So, my wrists are killing me. I was not able to take any notes on paper for this one, so this will be from memory. Yeah, um... The the you know I'm gonna I'm gonna use the I muted the computer I'm gonna use some of the visuals to jog memory yeah um the the merry-go-round whatever the the carnival ride thing I'm not 100% sure what the exact word for the specific one is. Yeah, um, the last episode ended with, you know, the, the revelation that David is going to try to help Farouk, which is what he's been lying about, and the fact that they're going to meet up, that he has a demand or two, is not a shock to anyone watching but the fact that they're they're having the meeting on this because you know it's in their minds they're not in any they're they're, uh, they're not in the same physical location rather they're in separate physical locations they can come up with anything and this is what they choose and and meanwhile Lenny if that is really Lenny that as he points you know as David is like is that really Lenny, like my roommate at the, you know, mental institution, and she's like licking this lollipops, or like her tongue is all, I want to say blue, like discolored from it, just like, yeah, very, very fun, and, you know, like, the fact that they specifically chose, because like, the thing is moving, you know, like, I can't, they, they must have turned off the, the sound, there must be way to turn the because that would be a complete nightmare to to shoot but even without that it's moving you know the camera has to keep up with that just yeah it is but it paid off it's a really really cool scene and let's see the yeah david expresses some confusion about the vermilion and I love the moment of, like, stop the car. Because he's, you know, he asks, how many of them are there? And Chonami is like, no one really knows. So when David says stop the car, it sounds like it's in response to that. It sounds like, I don't want to work with them if I don't know how many of them there are. <laughs> Which is such a deliciously absurd that that's where you draw the line? Like, you are, you already know that the, this is after Chonami has told him, I'm pretty sure there are automatons. I can't sense any memories of them. All I get is data. It's very soothing. But no, the the thing that sets him off is no one knows how many there are. You know, and like Sid, it doesn't even seem to occur to her. She doesn't go like, oh, I guess we reached our destination. She's just, why? <laughs> and the the casual, you know, and David's just like, this is this is the spot though. And, and yeah, legitimately, like, the fact that Farouk lured them out there, you know, the, the, yeah, three of the most effective mutants, and then also this, like, strike team, you know, leaving Division 3 defenseless, and Farouk even left this music box... Which not only tells us, you know, he knows that childhood memory of hers, and he knows they would mess with her. He knew that she would be the one to open it, you know, because it wouldn't have the same effect if one of the others opened it. But, yeah, you know, he knows, yeah, she is curious. So, you know, it, it, it kind of comes with the power. Like, the moment that you can switch bodies with anyone by touch... Like, that's either going to make you really anxious, which is what she seemed to be at the very start of the show, or you're going to be like, what that? what's that like, you know? And as they're, you know, while the, while the 
Mouse's Way, the, the two, well, wow, screwed that one up, while the cats are away, the, the mice play, and, and yeah, like the fact, you know, because it's, it's the, the scene, it's, we've seen it, a, you know, a million times in one of these, you know, comic book things, it's the bad guy going in and taking out a bunch of good guys, get, you know, to, but there's specifically like the, you know, like singing and such, and you know they turn one of the people into um, a pig and one into a fish. You know they're they're playing basically and just yeah and and you know meanwhile they're they're exploding human bodies and such and yeah them taking on. The two carry louder carries louder milk is also really chilling. You know, it's not a huge surprise that Carrie with a C comes out. Carrie Carrie with a K comes out when Carrie with a C is not able to. But yeah, you know, they they freeze Carrie with a K, and and yeah, basically take both of them out. And when they later try to to go back, you know, Carrie with a K goes back into Carrie with a C's body, you know, and we end up, or they, yeah, they end up with Carrie with a C's arm sticking out, really creepy, very nice effect. They must have done like, you know, shot the elements separately. That did not look like either a mechanical arm or like CG. And let's see. Yeah, I appreciate, the, you know, Fukuyama has realized there's some chance David is, is lying. And, and Carrie with a K, you know, really can't stand being outside for this long and not being physically active. You know, I, I really appreciate how they take these characters where it's like on paper, this sounds, if you know, not necessarily like the most wonderful thing in the world, but it sounds like it would give you a level of control over a number of situations that, you know, in real life you don't have control. Like, if I could count, like, I've, I've long since lost count. I can count, but I've long since lost count if I ever had been counting in the first place. The number of situations where my being able to swap bodies with someone who, you know, was more suited for the exact situation, I would have loved that, you know, but then, yeah, what if you end up, you know, in, in this kind of situation? So, very nicely done. And, yeah, we haven't really seen Carrie with a K this, this desperate before. It's not the first time we've seen her really uncomfortable. And, yeah, the idea of, you know, she's, yeah, she's able to, to fix the, or, yeah, handle the, the tank because of Carrie with a C giving her instructions. And I like the little moment of, sure, sticks the, in the, the plug and then, and Dave's like, ah! you know and, and Carrie's like oh pff. yellow 40 speak up you know and it's uh, it, yeah she, she probably heard yellow 4 Be, you know if you don't hear the entire number 40 can sound like 4 and let's see yeah and very effective when when David is talking to future Sid and here she is able to talk, unlike in the the orb. And this thing of, you know, she says something like, this wasn't supposed to be possible, you know, which, yeah, that's <laughs> not the most pleasant thing to, to hear in, in that circumstance, or any circumstance. And... You know, this thing, I, I kind of love, I, seriously, he doesn't say, you know, this, I'm going to make this happen again. He asks, would you like this to happen again? You know, like, because that is, like, yeah, 
she didn't ask for this meeting. She was able to to make you know the meeting in the orb happen. But this meeting is is not, and and yeah, you know he, because they are dating, you know, it's her cons or obviously, you know, consent always matters in intimate situations. But yeah, you know, he wants to make her happy. You know, if it would make her happy, then you know they can see each other again. And yeah, the the thing with, you know. Oliver really must be Farouk teaching this kid, you know, like, you know, green means go, red means stop, but he teaches him the wrong, you know, he teaches him that green is red and red is green. So, yeah, the kid crosses the crosswalk. He walks across the crosswalk and is hit by a car, and, and you know, Farouk is like, Okay, then. Let me just take a note of it. You know, just so creepy. And and I do really... Yeah, it's it's horrifying, which is something the show is, is quite good at. Thank you for that. No, seriously. And, you know, it is a very effective way to, to demonstrate the, the point, you know, the, the, that thing of you know, only human beings lose our minds, big, you know, in part because, you know, yeah, it is possible for us to, the, the, and, and it is absolutely accurate that humans are the only ones, we humans, I gotta be careful because sometimes I feel like I sound like a robot or an alien, and I've really been trying to keep that under wraps. I mean, obviously I'm not. We human beings are the only animals on earth capable of truly imagining like other animals can can imagine something might happen but it'll be related to like pure survival stuff you know hunt or that sort of thing but human beings can imagine such abstract concepts. Like, no animal would think of, oh, let's, you know, let's make a piece of speculative fiction with mutant powers and such. You know, that's that's something we humans come up with. And and just yeah, really love the exploration. And and yeah, love when uh Hold on, what was his name again? Clark, you know, confronts David, and you know the the you know he's like, do you have a minute? I'm really busy. It'll only take a second. And what are you gonna do for the other fifty nine? Anyway, and and yeah, you know, confronts him and is like, you know, those were my people that were killed. You know, and he does believe that David is is doing. You know, they still aren't the best of friends, the two of them, which is very logical. You know, and he's like, "What are you gonna do? Throw more office equipment at me? Burn me?" And you know, a little bit of telepathic back and forth. You know, uh, Clark thinks something, knowing David is going to read it, and David respond. You know, puts one of his thoughts in in Clark's mind so he'll know the answer and and yeah I love so so yeah he goes to talk to Farouk I love the shot of the of the um, crystal bowl where for part of that shot David is like basically reflected in it and we get this wonderful scene probably the best scene of the episode although the one of, uh, you know, Farouk going in and, and taking out a bunch of Division people is also... And I kind of appreciate... He didn't kill the kids, you know, but then he didn't have to. You know, maybe it's just being efficient. You know, he, he scared... He scarred them for life. Scared them and scarred them. But yeah, once, you know, David is communicating with, with Farouk, you know... Farouk speaks multiple languages and talks about how, you know, he is a god. You know, he, I am the sun and, and stuff like that. 
you know, so it's it's very nice to see the power has not gone to his head at all. And the just I love the visual metaphors to show, you know, the the like David agrees that they can fight, which you know, the the yeah, you know, like Think of how boring it would be if it was literally just two actors sitting across from each other, both doing the, the, the hold on, how many fingers is, yeah, the, the thing, you know, with the, the pose. But instead, you know, ev everyone watching is well aware, no, 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 what we're seeing is the, the, you know, it's a, it's a representation visually of the fighting that they're doing. And this thing of, you know, it starts with a little bit of wrestling. And then Farouk pulls out a sword. David transforms into a tank. That escalated quickly. I mean, that just went so fast. And then Farouk turns into, like, smoke or mist or something, which, yeah, you know, fire as many tank shells into that as you want. Not going to do any good. So, you know, we're we're seeing this, like, very creative thinking by Farouk. Love that. Uh, you know, it, again, think of, it, it would have been easy and pretty boring if he just became a bigger, you know, yeah, bigger tank or, or some kind of, you know, other artillery. Right, um, meant to say, I love that when David is communicating with future Sid, there's this thing of, like, the the um, almost kind of stutter for you know frame frames stick just a, a second or, or less sometimes just to communicate you know this is not yeah there's there's something slightly off about it right I quite liked uh, Lenny trying to talk Farouk into letting her go. Because she hasn't gotten laid in forever. And it it wasn't necessary. I the writers didn't have to have Carrie with a C, you know, make Carrie with a K to go tra la la in order to to bring forth, you know. I don't know if Carrie with a K Carry with a C had to, or if that was also just like maybe he's getting kind of annoyed and, and just wants to, yeah. But yeah, ultimately it does work, and yeah, they have this thing of, you know, maybe not going back, you know, maybe Carry with a K is not going to go back and carry with a C's body right away at least. And then we see that she's already gotten like white hair, or gray hairs. Uh, you know, even though she hasn't been out for very long. So, you know, I could imagine it's this thing of... Because, you know, Carrie with a C does have a gray hair or two. You know, that makes a lot of sense considering, you know, the, the age, the a number of years he's been on this planet. Carrie with a K, I can imagine, you know, once she's outside of his body for this long... Her age is, you know, she's aging rapidly because it's catching up to her. And, yeah, I, I'm really loving what they're doing with Melanie. She, you know, she straight up says, you know, forget saving the world. And you can understand, yeah, she spent all this time and effort keeping Oliver's dream alive, and now that dream is dead. Summerland is is no more and and Oliver's gone and yeah she's just thinking you know what go have a life you know go with with Sid and and have a life together and once Sid it wasn't necessary I really love the relationship between Sid and, and David because she could have clear evidently she could have turned back into herself from the start of that scene but instead she's you know he he walks up to her and it's like I'm not used to you playing with dead birds 
or licking your hand or you know being in that position you know is is everything okay it, and and yeah she, you know she's like over here and then he has to talk to the cat and he's like you know so it was you me the cat just yeah um and she does eventually turn back and they have this conversation and yeah it is this thing of you know is it okay to tell her because it's her in the future that tells him this stuff and and yeah you know this i i like that you know she says so you lied and he's like withheld Yeah, and at the very end, we see what appears to be the the monk, M Miso monk, I think they refer to, and yeah, just really looking forward to to more. Yeah, um, I kind of love that. Okay, so yeah. Um, Carrie is, is studying the orb, and he says, it's advanced, but not Shi'ar. I mean, like, a significant chunk of the people watching the show probably have no idea. If, if you didn't read the comics, or, you know, watch the animated, the, the 90s show that's just called X-Men, you know, you don't really have any idea what that, you know. Yeah, do they even say that, I'm not even sure he said in the episode that, that that's, like actually alien you know f like it could easily be like oh it's future technology brought back or just you know a really advanced earth civilization or something but but yeah um let's see um that might be about I have to say so the the song is apparently called the Tra La La song. It says written by Richie Adams and Mark Barkin. Um were they I mean, it almost, yeah, I'm not entirely sure if it actually was just written for this episode or, because, let's, okay, so, apparently it also appears in the, the, oh, okay, yeah, um, never mind, um, R.I.P. to both, um, yeah, yeah, is they they made it for something else, and it was just used here because yeah, one of them died, you know, before this episode even aired. So I'm thinking it was, but but yeah, um, and yeah, swinging on a star. Also think that was probably written for for something else. Um. I kind of so there's something in the IMDb trivia for this episode that suggests this might not be the case but I got to say when we saw the 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 hands above you know up in when when Sid and uh, David talk on the the rooftop you know it made me think of like kind of the representing the paranoia of you know if like one one hand with a, a finger pointing could be like you you the you the man kind of thing but there's like a bunch of them pointing in different directions that makes me think paranoia you know finger pointing you know so again just a, a great metaphor because in a way they are kind of wearing it on their sleeve like that you know again the episode before this one 
they literally, you know, a thing that they said to, to you know, keep in mind, beware of ideas that are not your own, you know, so just, yeah. Um, yeah, really love this episode, looking forward to the next one. Not 100% sure if it's going to be tomorrow, because if I understand correctly, tomorrow there's going to be one, at least one Bad Batch episode, and at least one X-Men 97 episode. I might have my hands full with just those, so we'll see. But I'll definitely try to make it soon. And, yeah. I'm going to go sing Tra-La-La even though I know I'm being watched, just in case there's secretly a person hiding inside me.